I wonder if any of you have seen that television show, The Voice. The voice where they, they have the, the tall chairs and, and the judges all out there. They're all facing away from the singer and the singer gets up there to sing. And now, sight unseen, they're judging them not by their appearance or by their apparent age or race or anything. They're listening for the voice. And when someone decides that they would like to work with that particular contestant, they'll, they'll hit their button and their chair spins around and now they get a look. But they have to commit to the fact that they're willing to work with them based only on the voice. People used to say that my brother and I look alike. I don't understand that. But I do understand when you take the whole package and realize that in some ways we sound alike. I'm a soprano by comparison. Other than that, we sound alike. I remember... Uh, back, back in the days of landlines when we did not each have our own telephone in the pocket but the family had a telephone hanging in the hallway and I'd pick up the phone and say hello and I'd hear this voice say hello baby <laughs> and I'd say hey baby how's it going <laughs> eventually they figured this out they learned that the, the, most of them learned to say Joel, <laughs> give a phone to talk. This voice, the voice is so important. The voice is what makes up. You have a beach filled with penguins and, and each one can find their chick because they recognize the peak. They recognize the voice. When a child is lost in a grocery store and crying, the mother recognizes that voice and finds the child, and when the child hears a mother calling, it can be in a crowd full of people and they recognize the mother's voice. That voice is what, what draws up. We, we think that a dog knows commands and a dog knows its name, and yet I can call that dog all day long and it's not going to come. But when the owner of the dog calls, the dog knows the voice. Interestingly, in the, uh, in, in the day that uh, Christ was born, that first Christmas morning, you remember it said, and there were shepherds in the fields abiding their flocks by night. There were multiple shepherds, there were multiple flocks. They were all together. But when the shepherds call, their sheep know where to go. Their particular sheep will follow that shepherd. They can all mix in the hill, they can all graze together. And when the shepherds separate and call the sheep, the sheep hear that voice and know it. We have a shepherd. He has a voice. Let's hear the word of the Lord. This is coming to you from John 10, verses 22 through 30. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly, Jesus answered. I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that you do in my Father's name <coughs> testify to me, but you do not believe, because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will scratch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can scratch it out of, my fa of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. There's an ebb and flow to church, and of course it's particularly pronounced here at Tropical Sands because we have so many snowbirds who will be, they will, they'll arrive for the winter months and they'll leave during the summer months. And, and, and so you have an ebb and flow of, of persons in the church. You also have generations come and generations go. Industries will rise and fall and as they do, their populations will also migrate to where the work is. It may be here, it may be elsewhere. But there's a funny thing that happens as a church grows. As a church grows, it's almost in inevitable that there will be some confusion and some conflict and some falling away. And the reason seems to be 
that there become so many messages start to get spoken and so many people have something to say and in this thing some people no longer hear the voice of Jesus at that church. It gets drowned out by other concerns. It gets drowned out by other voices. I've had people leave the church and I ask them, well, why did you go? They say, well, we just weren't being fed. They were here and somehow in their minds they did not hear the voice of Jesus. That's what we're all listening for. We, we go to various churches and some people may hear that voice in the, in the ceremony, some may hear it in the music, some may hear it in the preaching or in the fellowship or in the hospitality that is shown to them. Some may hear it in the Sunday school teacher or in the person that greets them at the door. But everyone is hungry for that voice of Jesus. We are the sheep of his pasture and we're looking for him and we're listening for that voice. We will go to the church where we hear that voice and when we no longer hear it, we'll go somewhere else. Listening for the voice of Jesus. When Jesus said, the Father and I are one, the, the uh, people listening to him, they picked up rocks to stone him because he was blaspheming. Why? For what are the good works that I do? They, do you stone me? And they say, not for those, but for, for blasphemy for putting yourself equal with God. And he went on to say, doesn't your own scripture say you are God's? And in scripture can't lie. So if, if he called those who received the word God's, how much, you know, why would you condemn me? Because I say that I am God's son. I am chosen by God who have shown you through my works, all of the, given you ample evidence that God sent me. They didn't recognize the voice, the voice of God. When Jesus said the Father and I are one, Jesus was really going out on a limb. And he's the only person on the planet that could ever actually say that and be completely honest. Nevertheless, by be, by saying that the, the, my hands and my Father's hands are the same, the Father and I are one, he is putting himself out there to say, I will represent the Word of God. I have a friend who's an agnostic doesn't know whether he believes or not. I can manage to pull him into the church sometimes. And he often says, you're my Jesus. Now, when somebody says to you, you're my Jesus, we shouldn't work so hard to convince them otherwise. They'll find out soon enough that we're not Jesus. And we will point if we're doing our jobs, we will point to the true Christ, the true Jesus, the one that the scripture testifies to. We will, we will say, no, no, I'm not Jesus. That's Jesus. This is Jesus. Here's what Jesus does. But they'll still look at you and say, you're my Jesus. Because they're not hearing the word of God from direct from the voice of Jesus Christ. They're not hearing God in any spiritual sense. They're, they're not hearing God in other places. They're looking for God. They are the sheep of his pasture. They want to hear the word of Jesus Christ and all they know to do is go to a preacher, go to a church, go to a, a, go to a self-proclaimed Christian and say, you're my Jesus. What do you have to say? I'm listening for the word of God. I'm listening for the voice of Jesus. And the question is, when they come to our church, when they come to your life, when they come to your workplace, when they come up to you, do they hear the voice of Jesus? Because I assure you, there are people who, whether they've ever told you this or not, they're looking at you, yes, you particularly, and thinking, you're my Jesus. It's an awesome responsibility, and you can't get away from it. After all, at this table, we accept that we are a part of the body of Christ, that the body of Christ is in us, and we are the body of Christ. We accept that the blood of Jesus Christ is the only thing that makes us worthy to represent Jesus. Paul said, you are my ambassadors. Paul said that we are as ambassadors of Jesus Christ. We are representing Christ. We are the, we are the body of Christ in terms of this world, in terms of everyone out there. It's true. And scripturally, spiritually, in every way, you are their Jesus. If Jesus is still in this world doing anything, it's because you're in this world doing something. If people hear the voice of Jesus Christ, it's because they hear us speaking the voice of Jesus Christ, carrying the message of Jesus Christ. And if they don't, 
maybe we're getting distracted. Jesus told the story about the the sower who went out to sow seed in his farm, and as he walked along, some of the seed fell on the road, and and uh, and and the, the wicked one came and took it right away. And some of the, the the crows, he said, representing the wicked one. Some of it fell among the rocks, and it was it came up quickly, but because it had no root, the sun came out and burned the seed, and it bore no fruit. Others were sown among the thorns, and. They grew up, but but the uh, but the thorns also grew up. It says, and it, it choked it out. Later, telling his his disciples, he said, "That's the because the um, the cares of this world and the riches, your failures and your success, your pains and your pleasures, the bad things and the good things, choke out the grain. These distractions from the word of God." Do they hear the voice? If I say, if we call someone the voice of the nation, then we're saying that that person is either authorized to speak for the nation or is saying something that the nation generally can agree on. The, the voice of the church, the voice of the Catholic Church is the Pope, elected, selected to be that voice. The voice of the church is the pastor or the elder or the moderator, the voice of the deacons, the voice of a nation, the voice of government, the voice of the people. The voice of a movement. If we are the voice, then our obligation is not to deliver our own message, but to deliver the message of the one we speak for. If we are the voice of Jesus, then it is our obligation to deliver that. And I want you to think about that for a minute. What made Jesus angry? I'll tell you what didn't. Incompetence. Incompetence. Doesn't make you mad, doesn't it? People don't know what they're doing. Doesn't make Jesus mad. Never bothered him. He never complained about incompetence. Believe me, he recruited incompetence. His, his disciples were absolutely that in so many ways, but it did not make him angry. Sin. He was not for sin. He was against it. He preached against it. He taught against it. But sinners did not, he did not get angry with sinners, with failure, with adulteresses. He did not get angry at sinners, nor because of sin. What made Jesus angry? The, the Pharisees and the Sadducees who grabbed on to religious authority and used it to beat people down, used it to get their way, used it against them. Because here they were, they were claiming to speak for God, saying something that God would not say. They were claiming to, to have the word saying something that the word did not say, or being selective in the message that they used in the word for their own purposes. They claimed to be the voice of God, and they were not. This entire chapter of John 10 is talking about Jesus as the good shepherd laying down his life for the sheep. He's the door to the sheepfold. The sheep know his voice. The, the, one, the ones who come after their hired hands, when the hired hand hears the wolf coming, he runs, but the shepherd protects the sheep. You're the voice of Jesus. People are looking at you saying, you're my Jesus. You're my Jesus. We hear that voice and we follow. But there are others behind us. There are others out there in your life that have never gone to church. There are others out there in your life that have gone to church and it just wasn't for them. They didn't hear the voice of Jesus. Or they went to church and it was wonderful. I was the last church I was at. It became about the music instead of about Jesus. And you can no longer hear the voice of the Jesus of Jesus. You can hear the voice of the band director. You can hear the voice of the choir. You can hear the voice of everything going on, but you couldn't hear Jesus through all the, the judgment and the and the rattling. You couldn't hear Jesus there anymore. And people leave. My sheep hear my voice. My father and I are one. We talked about that. I sound like my brother. My brother sounds like my father. I imagine Jesus sounds like his father. That voice, you're listening. There are people out there that are hungry for the word of God. They are hungry to hear the right thing. I, I never thought it would happen, but, there, but it happens to me on a frequent basis. 
where just the right word at just the right time can pull someone back into the church, can hold a family together, can save a life, can save a soul. Just the right word at just the right time. It's because it's the voice of Jesus. And there are so many other voices in this world. We don't have the, we don't have everybody's full attention. We don't have the stage all the time. We're not able to speak all the time. It's going to take every one of us and we're still going to miss people. And there are some people that don't want to hear it. They don't want to be the sheep of Jesus. But there are so many others that want to be. They want a church. They want to hear the love of God. They want to know that they're forgiven. They need to know that they are loved. They need to know that God gave that much to bring them back into God's family. They're listening for the voice. When they hear it, they will know it. They'll hear us. Will they hear Jesus? In the name of the Father. And the Son and the Holy Spirit. Let that be the voice that 